as we recognize Christ and try to become more like him and do a little bit better every day, we're winning. We're already there. We're already in the kingdom, right? Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not a list. We're already there because we're trying and repenting and trying and repenting and making covenants and keeping covenants and making new covenants and trying again and trying again and trying again. That's what keeps us in the kingdom. We are Saints in the South, your source for gospel growth and good times. Welcome to another episode of Saints in the South. How y'all doing? Uh, we got right. myself, Kenny. We got Average Joe and Rogue Bishop with us this week. Um, All right. Got lots of things to talk about. Been a, been a big week. Always. So we, yeah, man, a lot going on. So we're going to go ahead and... As Jump our adult in. children are telling us now, Kenny, there's always something. That's right. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm old. <laughs> so let's kick this thing off to, with our uh, world news tonight. We're all from the south. We're all from the south. We got few people and we're not afraid to stand our ground. So on the uh, on the world stage this week, um, in case you haven't been aware, there is in Britain has been quite a bit of civil unrest um, throughout Britain, going all the way from uh, the Northern Ireland to the south coast of England. There have been been protests and riots. Um, people are protesting the the influx of illegal immigrants, and so there's been uh, what? what has been labeled as a a, a wave of far right demonstrations, and. So prime minister and they had there's a new prime minister in Britain now. He he just he he just got in there like what a few days ago. Um prime minister with Keir the, Starmer less than a month. I know it was recent. I know what mm. very long. Um so uh, pr prime minister and I'm reading I've looked at several different ones. This one happens to be Fox News says uh prime minister Keir Starmer sounded the note of caution after a week of anti-immigrant violence that has scarred communities from Northern Ireland to the South coast of England. Starmer spoke to reporters at a mosque in Solihu, I can't say it near Birmingham where demonstrators shut down a shopping center on Sunday. Um, Police across the UK embraced for widespread disorder on Wednesday night after far right activists. And so, in case you're curious, we are actually recording on Thursday night. So, for us, that was just last night that this happened. Um, after far right activists circulated a list of more than 100 sites they planned to target, including offices of immigration lawyers and others offering services to immigrants. So, they actually told them where they're going to target. So, yeah, that's how it seemed. It seemed like it was posted online, and there's been lots of demonstrations. And this oh, is, wait, there's more. Yeah, yeah, there is more. There's more. So this this story seemed really relevant to me um, for two reasons, because we're talking we're going to be talking about a lot of uh, infighting between the, the Nephites and the Lamanites and those who those who broke away from the church and, and tried to attack it. And so lots of lots of hatred, lots of people getting kind of wound up with you know in group out group bias and and hating each other but there's also a lot about liberty in this week's lesson and uh what actually first the, the first thing i heard about this i didn't even know what was going on until i looked on uh, x you know for x twitter, <laughs> x twitter yep. and elon musk um posted this is actually happening and he um quoted sky news which said, quote, we do have dedicated police officers who are scouring social media to look for this material, then follow up with arrests. The director of public prosecutions of England and Wales warns that sharing online material of riots could be an offense. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just, I've just seen sharing people, or retweeting or re reposting. Yeah, I've seen some people debating on what this actually means, but according to if you take the news at face value, just like you said, Joe, just resharing, retweeting anything to do with any of these demonstrations is a punishable offense that you could be arrested for. And they yeah, are having, they have police actively scouring the internet, looking for people sharing anything to do with this on social media. And where's this at? Yeah, in England, in England Wales and North yeah, Ireland. Cause, Island. Cause there's nothing better to do for the police to do than, you know, do that. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, They've forget, about, forget people. about people that are, you know, shooting and killing and all the drugs and, and the, the human trafficking and what the, the terrible things going on with kids. No, we're going to focus on retweeting or reposting a riot. Yeah. And that's, um, it's, 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 it's very interesting. It, it kind of poses a, um, a really interesting kind of philosophical conundrum in the, in the realm of liberty. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we in the U.S. here, we, we've kind of, you know, our whole nation is founded on the concept of liberty. And we all have this belief that, by God, we can do whatever we want to do. We can share whatever we want to share on social media, you know, as long say as it's not we want to say. harming someone or we're not, you know, you're not posting, you know, vile content, or, which, you know, we talked about that also. You know, Facebook now has no problem with vile content. You know, you could post hardcore pornography in ads on Facebook and they say that it doesn't violate their terms of service, which is really interesting. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of other things that apparently do violate their terms yeah. of service. So I've heard people say that they, they've been banned from Facebook from jokingly telling somebody they were going to punch them in the face or kick them in the butt or something like that. And Facebook shut down their account without any warning, without any explanation, just shut them down. Wow. And so yeah, they'll shut you down for the pornography is okay. Making a playful comment about punching somebody in the face, but yeah, you can post uh, you can post ads that contain all kinds of hardcore pornography, and they're fine with that. You could report it, and they'll say, "Nah, we don't see any problem with this." Mm. So we live in a world where our values are all twisted and flipped upside down and backwards, and what's evil is good, and what's good is evil. Yeah. And, well, uh, I'm done with no, that nonsense. I need to hear it, some good news about the. <laughs> so I get it. Before I get all upset, yeah, we'll say this. This will segue. We we won't have to talk about that too long because I, I think that when we start talk, getting into the "Come Follow Me" lesson for this week, it'll it'll kind of shed some light on current events a little bit, for sure. Well, you mentioned yeah. Elon Musk and you mentioned X Twitter and. Uh, also world news was uh, he announced that he was moving X Twitter out of California into Texas. He's oh, also yeah. moving. He's also moving SpaceX out of California to Texas. So clearly all his exes are now living in Texas. <laughs> You've been waiting to say that, haven't you? <laughs> I've been sitting on that one for a while. <laughs> all Joe, his exes live in Texas. Joe, that was really yeah. good. That was really Thanks. good. Thanks. All right. Yes. Yes. Kudos. All right. So what we got going on for uh, church news? Uh, so church news, I thought this was pretty cool. This is announced by the church on August 1st. Um, the first chapters of teachings of President Russell M. Nelson manual is released, the digital copy. Um so that's pretty cool. It's the first time the church has ever released teachings of the prophet of a living prophet. Normally they wait till after they passed away. Uh, President Monson's uh, teachings were released in 2022. And so now uh, President Nelson's are being released. They're releasing f the first four chapters, but interestingly, they're not numerically in order or chronologically in order. I believe it's chapter. Yep. So chapter two, the atonement of Jesus. Uh, sorry, the Atonement of Jesus Christ, Chapter 4, Faith in Jesus Christ, Chapter 8, the Abrahamic Covenant, and Chapter 14, Revelation for Our Lives. Hmm. Uh, two more chapters will be released in September, two more in October. The church will continue to release additional chapters until the full resource of 28 chapters is available digitally. Hmm. So there's room for this to be adjusted and changed over time. Obviously, he's still alive, so they can modify it. Um, as, as we go along. So that's kind of, I thought it was pretty cool. And um, yeah, that, Hey, that is super cool because yeah. this actually gives the living prophet prophet a chance to say, yeah, no, nah, I don't want that in there. Oh yeah. Let's put right. this in there, you know, instead is, of, cause right. a dead prophet doesn't have that ability, right? right? Yeah, right. It's up to the, it's up to the new president that. or presidency and quorum of the 12th. To it gets veto power. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, speaking of something that, that you might um, think someone would shy away from, speaking on the Abrahamic Covenant section in chapter 8, President Nelson said, he explained he was not, quote, raised in, the, he was not, quote, raised in a gospel-centered home. 
but he was baptized at age 16 along with his siblings. And he said, quote, As I matured and began to understand the magnificence of Heavenly Father's plan, I often said to myself, I don't want one more Christmas present. I just want to be sealed to my parents. That longed-for event did not happen until my parents were past 80, and then it did happen. I cannot fully express the joy that I felt that day, and each day I feel that that joy of their sealing and my being sealed to them. I just thought that was super powerful that the president of the church, prophet on the world today, of the world today, shared this, this, I mean, it, for him probably seemed very nonchalant, very behind, very vanilla, but right there, you're hearing the prophet of the world today wasn't baptized until he was 16 years old. He wasn't raised in a super religious household. He wasn't sealed to his parents until his parents were in their 80s. And so, I mean, I just think of, I think of kids who, who feel like they're not maybe living up to the standard. I think of parents who are worried about their kids who may not be living up to the standard or kids worried about their parents not living up to the standard. Yeah. You, your, your prophet today can understand where you're coming from, can understand, you know, the, 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 the trepidation of your heart when you're praying to the Lord to, to guide your family to the sealing power that is in the temple today. So I thought it was super cool that they they put that in there. So that's awesome. Yeah, I, I did not know that. Yeah, that's really cool. I thought y'all would enjoy that. Very much so. Good well, that's deal. the news in the church today. News in the church today. All right. So what what do we have on uh, parenting this week, Mister Rogue Bishop? Well, I've been thinking quite a bit about um, what Jackson said a couple episodes ago when we were talking about how uh, uh, Alma, uh, the younger, brought his sons in and wrote what he said to them, you know, um, uh, about uh, do what do as I have done, right? Do as I have done and, and not so much don't do what I did, right? Yeah. Right. And I thought, as I've been thinking about this and and uh, growing up with uh, my nine siblings <laughs> and uh, the parenting style that my parents used and watching different parenting styles of my cousins and their parents and my aunts and uncles and uh, just, you know, the different places that we've lived and stuff. And then, like I said before, you know, raising my own children. Um, you know, I think... I think Alma the Younger really knew his kids. I mean, he knew how to talk to them individually. Um, and because, one, it was it was phrased a little bit differently how he spoke to them. But, you know, I remember growing up, not only did I say this, but my siblings said this. And I remember a couple times my kids said saying this, well, probably more than a couple. <laughs> <laughs> When I would say, uh, or when my dad would say something like, um, or, or when I said it to my kids, he'd say something like, um, um, you know, hey, well, this is what I did, and this is what I think you should do. You know, and I'm, our response was, well, I'm not you. So even though he was trying sure. to be the positive, right, and say, well, this is what I've done, and I encourage you to do it, well, I'm not you. You know, so it really doesn't matter whether we say, don't do what I've done. Because they'll say, well, if you did it, I'm going to do it. Or please do what I've done. Well, I'm not you. You know, our kids will have a comeback. So I think the, my parents, so this is this is my parenting tip is just really getting to know your kids individually. You know, um, spend time with them. Like, like, you know, you have your date night with your spouse. You know, if, if, it's, if you're able to, um, if you can, you know, and I would encourage you to find the time. Take a child out, you know, once a week, just them, right? Especially if you have more than one, just them and, and make an evening with them where they can just be with you, with you as the parents, you know, so that there's no one else competing for their time. There's no one else competing for their attention. Um, you know, it's just you're both focused on just them. And then listen to them, you know, make sure that you, that they, you give them plenty of time to talk and whatever it is that they want to talk about. I remember... One time it was funny because um, my my dad wanted to talk to me about something super important. And um, 
So we spent the whole day together, just my dad and I. I went to work with him. And on the way there, he let me do all the talking, you know, and I got to tell him exactly how I felt and, and, and you know, my perception of things and, and, and everything. And then on the way back, you know, he, he addressed my concerns and, and then let me know his concerns and things like that. And, yeah, I mean, it was, he, he did a remarkable job, but it was, it was hilarious the way that, that I took it at the time, being at the age that I did, because after we got back, my mom said, well, how did, how did it go? And I said, well, on the way there was all was great, but on the way back, I, I couldn't stand that. That was terrible. <laughs> and there was what's even funnier is my mom said, that's hilarious because your dad just said the opposite. Hmm. So he that's couldn't fun. he couldn't take it. He didn't like it on the way there, but he thought it was great on the way back. You know, it, it was two people just getting to say what they wanted, but neither one really listening to the other, right? So true communication didn't take place, you know, and I take as much blame as as anyone else should for that, you know, but we all grow and we learn. And um, so it's important that, that you, one, get to know your kids, spend time with them, let them talk, hear them out. And even if you think you know what they're going to say, don't cut them off, right? Don't cut them off. Let them finish their sentences. Let them finish their thoughts. You know, um, I, I noticed a lot of times in Sunday school classes, um, a teacher may cut a kid off, or if there's a few minutes of silence, they really get um, they, they, they get nervous about the silence. And so they, they, they jump in and start talking again. And I, I say embrace the silence. Embrace mm -hmm. it. Give them a chance to mull things over in their head. There's a sales mm -hmm. technique that, I, that I've teach, taught my agents ever since you know I've done sales, and it's always been um, silence is your friend. Yeah. Because if you pose a question to, especially a couple, if there's two people in front of you or more, if you pose a question to them and then you're not embracing the silence and waiting for them to respond, you will kill the sale. You'll kill it yeah. because you're interrupting their, the sales process that's going on in their head. You're interrupting that time that they're reflecting and you just blew it. You absolutely blew it. Well, the same thing if you're trying to teach something, right? Let the kids think about it. Let them mull yeah. it over. I promise you that there's going to be kids in the class that hate the silence even more than you do. Someone will speak. Someone will, right? So yeah. don't don't be the one that breaks that. So especially when you're talking to your own kids. And in closing, I just want to you know give a story. Um, in, in our home. <clears throat> when my kids were little. My wife and I decided that the only time we would ever spank them is if they told a lie. That if they come to us and told us the truth, no matter what it was, they weren't going to get a spanking. The only time that they get a spanking is if they lied. So it seemed to work really, really well with my three daughters. Um, mm. Just, it, but my but my son, it just didn't work. It, it didn't work at all. And we would catch him in a lie, and 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 he would, and I'd. Son, you know that you're lying. I, I know that you're lying. And you're lying. And he goes, yeah, I know. And he said, you know what happens when you lie? He goes, yes. So he knew that he would get the spanking. But he lied anyway. Finally, uh, after, I don't know, several months of this, I just, I'm worn out. I, I just, I don't know what to do. And so I finally just, I don't know if it was in disgust or what, but in a super calm voice, I said, I don't understand. Why are you, why do you continue to lie? And he said, because dad, when I tell you the truth, you just get mad and yell. Mm. And your yelling hurts me worse than the spanking does. Wow. I had to grow up that day. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I had to grow up that day. So um, anyway. So you decided to start spanking him when he told the truth. No. And I yell didn't. at him when he lied. <laughs> and then you got it. Uh, 
<laughs> that's hilarious that's you, joe but i I, just, I felt like an idiot oh my gosh i felt like such an idiot and you know just just when you think you have it all together as a parent your kids will let you know that you don't <laughs> right that's right so so it's constant learning constant learning anyway yeah. those are my parenting tips it's amazing how much we Good. learn from parenting mm. i know um yeah for me with my oldest son it seemed like just when I started to get everything figured out, like he was already had, had, had grown so much that it was, he was a different person. So I had yeah. to readjust, you know, you're yeah. constantly having to readjust Whoa. like, okay, I've got things figured out now. I know, I know how, how to raise this kid. I know how to teach him. I know what I need to do to get through to him. And then, but just when I think I've got it figured out, it just throw all that out the window. It's yeah, hmm. he's already, cause they, they grow and develop so fast and mm -hmm. it's just, it's amazing. I think it's a lot like sailing, you know? How's that? Um, well, I don't know how to sail, so I figured it's probably a lot like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're exactly right. Just trying to figure if you've it out. Never you sailed, go, you know? If you've never sailed before, parenting is a lot like sailing. Yeah, you're like the winds and the, the sails and the current, and uh, yeah, it's probably a lot like it. Yeah, I yeah. would agree. That's Too bad that I, I, my wife and always said, I wish that every every baby came with a manual so you yeah. know their personality you know their personality type their color their likes their dislikes just give me a manual <laughs> yeah it's not how it works though you know that's why I you know. gotta listen that's why that's why you gotta be in tune and listen and well and, i think it's uh, have the holy ghost to be, help you. exactly i think it's good to be listening is key and being humble i think is key like it, we clearly you're, you're learning, you're, you're figuring this mm -hmm. out and being able to listen to other parents, listen to your kids and uh, listen to the spirit, I think is the, the key thing, the key things you need to be, to be successful, to be in tune because you're going to learn every day. You're learning. Mm -hmm. um, that humility is the hardest part though. That is. Really you, For me, you go was, into it thinking I'm the parent and what I say goes, but Man. Especially, then, especially you, as the dad, you know the father. Yeah, and then right? you're gonna like, lose. God, I mean, the you, father, you, if you say those words, you've already lost. Yeah, yeah. the Potter familius. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, where are now? <laughs> I don't remember what movie it was that I watched uh, recently, but there was, a, and it wasn't a particularly good movie, but there was a line in there that I really appreciate. It's the Lion King. <laughs> there was a few no. lines in there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, there was. But these are different lines. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, I remember yeah. what it was now. But anyway, I'm not going to say. But um, the, 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 the dad. All that build up just to not say. Come on now. That's right. It's in the <laughs> after show. The maybe, maybe I'll share. That's, that's for our Patreon subscribers. The dad, the dad was with his estranged daughter, right? And uh, they were getting back together. Uh, it, it, and not because either one of them necessarily wanted to, but because circumstances brought them back together. And she was letting him have it. You know, you now you're finally trying to get back in my life and letting him know how he blew it as a dad. And you did this wrong. I'm just really letting him have it. And, and he was listening. He was taking it all in. And, um, you know, and she's, she's like, you got nothing to say. You got nothing to say now. And uh, he said, um, he said, you know, I just want you to know that you were going through all this for the very, oh yeah, yeah, she said, and I was, and you weren't supporting me and I was going through this for the very first time and where were you? And, and he said, yeah, it's true. You were going through this for the very first time, but I was going through being a dad with you for right. the very first time. All these things that you were going through, I was going through for the very first time. He says, I'm not making an excuse. I just, I, you just need to understand that you weren't the only one going through that for the very first time. I was like, wow, that was really good. I could really relate to that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it helps us, to me, it helps us forgive our parents a lot easier. Um, hopefully help us to communicate with our kids a little bit better. One of the, th one of the last things I was going to share for a parenting tip is, of all the things that I discussed and all the great dad talks that I gave my kids, you know what they remember the most? What's yeah, that? and I'm not, I'm not going to make you um, guess, but the thing that they remember the most out of all of that was not the talks. 
wasn't anything great that I said. It was the times that I told him I'm sorry. Mm. When I admitted fault, when I said it was my fault, and I'm the one that lost control of the situation and told them I was sorry and asked for their forgiveness, that's what they remember out of all. They don't even remember what we were fighting about or what the argument was about. Yeah, they just remember the me telling them, tell them I'm sorry. So yeah, tell your kids you're sorry. Somebody mentioned, and I thought it was a church, was it in conference recently? Uh, a phrase came up that I don't recall anybody ever saying before. A prodigal fathers rather mm. than the, oh, the, yeah. the typical prodigal son. Mm. They mentioned there are many prodigal fathers out there that we need to be welcoming back. Mm -hmm. And I thought, mm, that's a that's a very deep concept yeah. I had not considered previously. But you yeah. have a lot of people we're kind of we're kind of turning it on its head, the normal paradigm of getting married young and and having um kind of this greater generation kind of uh, trajectory in life. And that's very much uh, being altered these days. And so I think humility and, and having the spirit with you is a big component of a uh, happy, healthy family. So, Absolutely. Anyway. All right. Well, let's get into some come follow me. What do y'all say? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. This it's week, it's we very, are. very, yeah, very sad, though, that we don't have uh, Jackson with us because. Oh, yeah, because this is his oh. favorite, man. He's all about, he loves Captain Moroni, the title of Liberty. This is, yeah, so. Jackson, he has a little yeah. figurine of Captain Moroni in, in, in the golden studio of <laughs> Saints in the South. <laughs> so, this week we are in Alma, chapters 43 through 52. The title is Stand Fast in the Faith of Christ. Let you uh, read that intro for us, Joe. Sure. When we read these words at the beginning of Alma, chapter 43, and now I return to an account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites. It's natural to wonder why Mormon included these war stories when he had limited space on the plates. It's true that we have our share of wars in the latter days, but there is value in his words beyond the descriptions of the strategy and, tragi and tragedy of war. His words also prepare us for the war in which we are all enlisted. See hymn number 250. The war we are fighting each day against the forces of evil. This war is very real, and the outcome affects our eternal lives. Like the Nephites, we are inspired by a holy cause, our God, our religion, and freedom, and our peace, our wives, and our children. What Moroni called the cause of the Christians. Oh, yeah. So we got a lot of good stuff this week. So we are, we're just going to have to skim through because there's two so hour much episode. in this, this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could, yeah, we got two options. We could either just kind of skim through it or, yeah, we could do like a three or four hour episode. Right. Yeah. Just I'm, mega out. Episode. I, I'm out on the three or four. I'm out. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, I guess I I can kick it off because I know there was something in the very first chapter. Um, lay it on us, they, brother Kenny. Lay it on us. I'm about I'm about to lay it on. I, I hope everybody's ready. But lay it on. Lay it down. Alma 43. Um, in verses seven and eight, talks about the wicked leaders stirring up hate in the hearts of the people mm. to control them. And this is very interesting. Like uh, I mentioned just a little bit earlier, we've got. Um, a lot of contention in this this uh, lesson we talk about a lot of uh, contention between within group within a country you know within groups of people um different people trying to kind of vying for for power or vying for uh yeah trying to yeah just uh, exert their their power over others um and doing this through the manipulation of kind of stirring up hate Chapter 40, 43, verses 7 and 8 say, Now this he did that he might preserve their hatred toward the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjection to the accomplishment of his designs. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did that he might usurp great power over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by bringing them into bondage. So this is talking about Amalekiah. 
What a schmuck. Yeah, he's he's a schmuck. He's a real jerk. He's gonna punch and him so in the he, face. He had he had some pretty grand the, these grand designs here. He had some really I mean, this is like some some yeah. cloak and dagger. Like, yeah, man, he, he, yeah, he had some schemes going on. This guy I mean, he's a, obviously a very cunning and brilliant and intelligent person. Yeah. Can you imagine if he used all that for good instead of imagine bad? what leader he could be? Plus, it says that he was actually a large and strong man, large in yeah. stature, a big, a big, strong, imposing, a man's man. Kind of like crazy Joe. intelligent, super intelligent. Mm. Oh, yeah. If he had if he had used what he was blessed with for good, man, he could have been. He could have been such an awesome leader. He, you know, he might have been another Captain Moroni or something. But instead, he chose to use his gifts to try to gain power for himself. He, um, he, he, he did a lot of the silver tongue um, kind of sweet talking to the people to try to lead them away from the church. He was successfully able to lead a large number of the people away from the church. And when he did, he put in to be their king. And they were all like, yeah, we want you to be our king. And among a large, a large number of these were the lower judges. And we remember we talked about this before, how, you know, Alma mm -hmm. set everything up with the higher courts and the lower courts. Mm -hmm. And he was able to seduce a lot of these judges, the lower judges, because he told them, hey, you follow me and you'll be in charge. You'll be yeah. you'll be the high courts. Yeah. A bunch of empty promises that oh, he yeah. never had any intention of keeping. Absolutely. And you know, so, what's crazy to me, too, just to jump in here real quick, Kenny, sorry about that, was oh, really? that I I, I, I kind of, I don't know. I mean, I didn't live there, so I don't know, but it's kind of, to me, a little bit, I don't know, crazy that, you know, he, 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 he does a good job of getting dissenters among the Lamanites, but I mean, the Nephites, but when he goes to the Lamanites, I mean, why didn't the Lamanites just say, Dude, get out of here. You're a Nephite. We don't want anything to do with you. Get your Nephite problems in you and get out of our land or we're going to chop your head off. I mean, why didn't they do something like that? You know, I mean, why did they even listen to him and, and allow a Nephite, right, mm -hmm. to kindle their hatred and say, okay, yeah, we're going to follow this dude. And, you know, I know that it was part of his scheme and, and he eventually killed the the Lamanite king and then became king himself. But what? I yeah, mean, didn't I he, just, uh, he, he married the, the queen, um, yep, took his yep. wife, he, he killed, yep. killed the king and then took his wife so he could yep. be king. Yeah. And it just, I just don't understand why the Lamanites just didn't throw him out right away. Cause, cause uh, you know, I mean, again, they didn't like the Nephites anyway. Why, why listen to this guy? Yeah. I don't know. That he's, I think it's cause he spoke their language. Um, this is, we're going to get back on the soapbox. I've, I've been hitting up, a few times already is that it's it's the it's this victim mentality right he's mm -hmm. selling he's selling them the story they wanted to hear already mm -hmm. uh that the nephites are bad that they've taken advantage of you that uh that they owe you that that you shouldn't be living like this it's it's their fault everything that's a problem in your life the fact that you're fat your 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 wife is mean to you your kids are noisy it's all the nephites fault and that was a story they already wanted to hear and the Nephites, is, I think it's much the same way that if you're not successful, if it's because it's because of uh, this, that and the other thing, it's because of your society, it's because of your church, it's because of your leaders, they're all keeping you down. And it's the same exact message that gets sold time and time again with these civilizations that are split apart and broken apart. So and I was about to say, down. how many times has this happened throughout history? Right. Yeah. It's the you same. See, right. Obviously, you know the the the, the low hanging fruit here is World War II to Germany. We know about that. You know the the Jews were a scapegoat. They were the ones. It's like yeah. he got all of Germany worked up. Like these Jews, that it's it's their fault. It's their fault that the economy is is in the tank, and it's your their fault that you can't. There's not enough food, and yada yada yada. Um, sure. In the, the communist revolution in in Russia too, um, with Joseph yeah. Stalin, uh, that was yeah. the, the exact same thing. He got everybody. It's all oh, these rich farmers. These are the ones. It's their yeah. fault. They're, you know, these these rich farmers here are the ones that are getting all the resources. You know, you need to rise right. up. You need to rise up, and you know, the common man needs to take his place, and all this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it's it's the same, the same thing we see over and over, repeating throughout history. And there's also an element of uh, a lot of in group, out group bias here. You know, like I think one of the reasons also that they the Lamanites listen to Amalekai is because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm. Right. 
So they're like, he might have been a Nephite, but this guy was like, hey, I hate the Nephites. I yeah. might be one, but I hate these guys. They're a bunch of dirt right. bags. And they're like, oh, okay, all right. Keep on talking. Yeah. Tell me what you got to say. Well, you know, and, and he could have sold them like, you know, like what Joe was talking about. Maybe he sold them the fact that, hey, you know, all these people want me to be king, but I got thrown out. And and can you believe what they did to me? And and I'm the victim here, too, just like you guys are the victim. Well, it's it's a um, it's the same story, but but sold in a new a new wrapper, right? I mean, all the Lamanites can sit around and say, "Oh, these Nephites are terrible," but mm -hmm. I, all the Lamanites have already heard other Lamanites say the same thing. What's mm -hmm. new is now you have a Nephite telling you that story. Yeah. You love the story already, but now it's a different version. It's, a, it's from oh, a different yeah. place, an exclusive source, or you know, mm -hmm. breaking news. So, yeah, know. everybody loves it's, that. They love that. I think that's it. Is just like you know, and a lot of this was him drawing people out of the church there there was an established church um, mm -hmm. yeah just like today you know it's it's the church's fault that all this is happening to you it's yeah. it's that church that you go to that's why you have all these problems that's why you're not happy that's why you're not living your full you i mean is and they and love it, it when a member of the group they don't like comes forward to say, oh, I don't. I, I used to be one of them, but I don't like them now. Yeah, and they're you know, only they love all the the ex Mormons, quote unquote, on, yeah, on YouTube. But they only TikTok. love them for a time. This is the point. Yeah, they right. only love them for a time. They use them, and and they use them to where to the extent that they that they think that they they've got them, you know, and then psh, they let them go. There's yep. there's no. There, there's no there's empathy love, after that. No sympathy. No. There's no love. There's no embrace. They're just they're gone. We even, we see the same thing in, in in politics and race and everything. You know, there's, I mean, who doesn't? Especially if 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 anybody who's really encamped in their like political party, if you have a member of the opposing party who steps out and says, you know what, I've been one of these guys for years, but I'm right. not going to be one of them anymore because I don't I don't like what they've been doing, and I'm I'm going to call them right. out on all the things they're doing wrong. They celebrity status. Oh yeah. yeah, instant celebrity status. Absolutely. Right. So yeah, that's you know more than likely a lot of the the factors that were at play here as well. Good sure. points, guys. I think Very so. Good points. So the, the, you know the thing that stood out to me was um, Satan. You know, and 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 if you if if you really I think and I think that Joe and Kenny did a great job of bringing this up. You know, really you you need to know who's behind all this. It's always Satan. It's always, always, always Satan. He's the one that stirs up people's hearts. And and here's the thing, too. He's, um, I mean, as smart and as cunning as this Nephite dissenter was, right, that we just got done talking about, Satan's even, even more. I mean, think about it. This guy, this guy, in the presence of Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ convinced one third of God's kids to follow him in open rebellion. And, and for us to think that, that all that's done and that, that war is over and we're here on earth, you know, just trying to do the best we can. No, that war is not over. He's here and he's using every cunning tactic that he is, that he did before on us now. Right. And we might before we get overwhelmed and think, well, you know, he's, he's got the advantage because he didn't go through a veil of forgetfulness. And, and I can't remember all this. And now he knows me more than I know myself. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Before you get all discouraged, Heavenly Father knows you better than he does. Right. You know, and he That's knows right. you by name and intimately. And he yearns for you to come home. In fact, he wants you to come home so bad. That he stacked the deck in our favor. He stacked the deck in our favor because he knew we would need a savior before we even came, before Satan ever even revolted and rebelled. He knew we needed a savior. I love that. I love I love the way you worded that. That's awesome. He stacked the deck in our favor. He did stack he the did. deck in our favor. You know, and it, that all that's going to be taken into account. And, and we just, as we recognize Christ and try to become more like him and do a little bit better every day, we're winning. We're already there. We're already in the kingdom, right? Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not a list. We're already there because we're trying and repenting and trying and repenting and making covenants and keeping covenants and making new covenants and trying again and trying again and trying again. That's what keeps us in the kingdom. 
yeah. the stack is stack is is it, it's the deck is stacked in our favor. It is yeah, and, the, and the thing, yeah, I, th uh, I think another important thing to, to note is all the things you said it, it absolutely true, but those things are only a reflection of our acceptance of Christ and his sacrifice. And that's where I think a lot of people get confused when they so many you know evangelicals, you know, they they seem to have this idea that we, you know, we believe we earn our own salvation or something through these things. And like, no, that's that's not how this works at all. Um it is only like you said, he, he gave us a savior. Jesus came to earth. He took upon himself the sins and the pain of every human being who ever had lived or ever would live. And all we have to do is accept that. And when we accept that, when we make covenants, that's part of our acceptance where we're moving forward. We'll say, Jesus, I trust you. I, you know, I put my faith in you. And when we put our faith in him, we are going to move forward. We're going to, we're going to go to the temple and we're going to make these covenants and we're going to, we're going to strive to be more like him every day. And we're going to repent and we're going to do all these things because, because we love him and because we accept the atonement that he performed for us on our behalf. Yep. And that's that's the part about the repenting that I threw in there. You know, it's because yeah. it doesn't do you any good to accept your savior and then you go punch people in the face all the time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. The, you know, you're, Lucifer's you're rebellion. <laughs> it's just the audacity for me that just the audacity. The, the audacity. audacity. Punch him in the face. <laughs> that's Inconceivable. <right>. No, it's <laughs> uh you know, and that's part of becoming, you know, we, we're trying to become more like Jesus. We're trying to become like Heavenly Father. And, that, and that's where that's where we're the, the doing the good works and becoming and, and repenting, that's where the works come in because their works should be a natural reflection of what's going on in your soul, of your, conver your conversion and your acceptance of your Savior your actions right. are going to be a reflection of that. If you still mm -hmm. go out and you're stealing and 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 hurting punching people and people you're bad and and punching them in the face, all these things, right? Deceiving them, lying to them, then you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your still savior. Got work to do. You may you, you can say that you did, but you truly haven't because if you had accepted Christ as your savior, you would not do these things. Mm -hmm. Right? And so just Preach keep it. in mind that, yeah, <laughs> keep in mind that, yeah. but keep in mind that everything that Satan is behind all of this, all of this hate and, and, and deception and stirring up. And, and remember this, you know, and this is something that I try to help the kids remember because. I like that catchphrase, Satan behind the hating, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. That's we a need bumper a shirt right there. That's a shirt right there. Yeah. The thing that I was going to say is one of the things that I wanted to, that I try to help the kids, you know, in Sunday school and, and stuff like that is to understand that they are not responsible for the bad thoughts that get in their head. If you're trying to be like Jesus and you're trying to be like Heavenly Father and you're trying to repent, and you're trying to do better and just, just do better, you are not responsible for bad thoughts that hit your, that come into your head. That is Satan. What you're responsible for are, is keeping those thoughts, dwelling on those thoughts, mm. continue to think about those thoughts. That's when it becomes starts to become your responsibility, right? Not the thought itself. So give yourself a break for a bad thought, right? But as bad thoughts come in, you can't just push them out. They're, that creates a void, and nature hates a void, so they're going to come rushing back. You need to yep. replace, replace the thought with Scripture, a hymn, something. Replace it. But that initial bad thought, that's that's not your fault. So don't get down on yourself. Oh, yeah. Don't. I believe any man that tries to tell you that they don't have any of the, any kind of bad thoughts is is a liar. There because <laughs> uh -huh. if you are a human, if you especially if you're a man, you are going to at some point you're going to have feelings of of wanting to punch somebody in the face. Something. You're going to have you're going to you're going to be a brother. woman and that have lustful talking. thoughts or feelings. You're going to have I know a lot of girls yeah. out there that want to punch people in the face too. So you know, I'm just Yeah. yeah. So you're so yeah, you're going to have there. these feelings of 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 lust or violence yeah. or envy and all of these things, but yeah, that's that's where our choice comes in is whether yeah. we dwell yeah. on it or whether dwell we on to it put it out. The thoughts yeah. going to come. And that doesn't it mean is. you're a bad person if that thought comes. Nothing's wrong with you if that thought comes. Okay. There was a general authority that came to our mission, and I don't recall who it was now, but I, I always remember this statement he made. It was very similar to what you're saying. 
because you're thinking uh, on a general authority level, uh, Rogue <laughs> Bishop is um, he said you, you can't you can't prevent We're a burglary. That part out. We're going to cut it. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, he said you, you can't prevent a bird from landing on your, head, but you can't prevent it from building a nest there. And so <laughs> there you go. his idea of uh, you know th- thoughts come out of nowhere and it, it just happens you can't prevent that but you can prevent it from from dwelling there and, and, and kind of growing it and building it so i thought it was a good point um, I, yeah. I think i want to add too though that that um i think there's an element of jealousy too because um going back to chapter 46 mm-hmm. um in verse 10 we, it says, yea, we see that Amalekiah, because he was a man of cunning device and a man of many flattering words, that he led away the hearts of many people to do wickedly, yea, and to seek to destroy the church of God and to destroy the foundation of liberty, which God had granted unto them, or which blessing God had set upon the, sent upon the face of the land for righteousness sake. So the people were blessed because the people were righteous and Amalekiah hated that. Mm-hmm. You know, he that's the, he wanted to destroy it because he wanted to destroy the liberty and all the blessings that they had for their righteousness. Mm-hmm. So he tried to lead them away from it. And sounds like somebody else I know. Yeah. That would be Satan. Yeah. He hates us because we have bodies, and he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Satan got the hating. He Satan got the hating. Man, that's, right. <laughs> that's the enmity that he builds. It's a mm-hmm. line by line. I think. Um, mm-hmm that kind of comes up in this lesson is like a, a gradual descent, right? It's not one huge bad mistake nope. that you nope. make. It's a nope. gradual, you know, step-by-step process of pulling you away of creating mm-hmm. that enmity between you and God through jealousy, through, through that victim mentality of, mm-hmm. I deserve something different than what I got. And I, I think it, it pulls you to darker and darker places. I think you can see that today in people's, um, writings and things like that that you know they start off with well-intentioned you know we just want to help everybody and it wouldn't doesn't it sound nice to have everybody have the same thing yeah and, yeah. and then you end up in a totally different place before you know it the people that have gone further down that path are now talking about unspeakable things of of, of grouping people together and judging them as a group and punishing them for things that they have never done mm-hmm. um and so, yeah, I think it's that enmity, and, and I think you get you get calloused, you get scarred to where you don't even realize how far off the path you've gone. Mm. Um, but I mean, it's just kind of reminds me of um, a talk by I think it was at at that time President Uchtdorf. Um, you know, he he sometimes likes to use uh, aviation metaphors. You know? Only I don't know if anybody's sometimes. ever noticed that. Yeah, I, I I didn't pick but, um, up on that. No. So yeah, there was one talk where he he was talking about. How you know if a pilot is is flying in a certain direction and his course is set just a tiny mm. bit off if he's just two degrees two degrees just two just the tiniest little bit off yeah. it, it, you know it, it, at first it's not that much but the farther you go the farther you get away from where you're headed and gradually mm. little by little and that's that's what happens mm. yeah yeah that's how it goes. That's right. But, the, but the, the, the reverse is true as well. You don't have to go from, from sinner to saint overnight. You don't have to completely, you know, have this um, amazing conversion and translation on the same day. You know, yeah. I mean, you can be, you, you can show up and sit next to me smelling like cigarettes. You can sit next to Kenny smelling like alcohol. If you're trying you're wanting the, the, the spirit in your life. You're calling up upon Jesus because he's already paid for all those sins. That's right. Paid for the sins you've done, paid for the sins you're going to do. It's a matter of believing and changing, as Michael said. It's a challenge to become, to use that atonement to cover you and to accept that. And with that, the, the more converted you become, the more you change, the more mm-hmm. you become. Um, so. You know, there are people who have those miraculous experiences where they just, you know, they, they just, one day they just, they, they get it. They, they accept Jesus Christ and they're, they're changed in this poof. It's like, they're a different person from that. Mm-hmm. But those people are a, a slim minority. I think most, yeah, of yeah. Us, most of us have to work at it. It's, it's, it starts and it, it's, it's, it's just a, a path. 
You know, you, you I hundred percent, I hundred percent agree with you, Kenny. Yeah, no. Sometimes we hear about people that you know once they accepted accepted Christ or accepted the church or um, let's say that they'd fallen away and decided to come back, and when they made that decision, then their their desire for cigarettes just went away. Just you mm-hmm. know, just like that, it was gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, for my dad, that was that's true. That worked, right? For awesome. my mom, oh heck no. No. She no, she had things that she worked on the whole rest of her life. I I have things that I've been working on since a teenager that I've finally gotten to the point that that temptation is no longer there. But that was years and years of struggling and and falling and I would go two weeks and then fall again. I'd go a month mm-hmm. and then fall again. You know, it, it doesn't matter how many times you fall again. It Just keep getting back up. Eventually, eventually, you're going to get there. And if you don't, if you die trying, it's the fact that you die trying that's going to save you. Just yeah. don't stop trying. Mm. Solid advice. And if you keep falling, it's because you'd just be tripping, man. <laughs> well, let me ask you all this. We'll change gears a little bit here. The title of Liberty. I know Jackson's probably like, oh, man, I can't believe I missed it tonight. Title of Liberty. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Most beautiful document ever created. So that's pretty awesome, isn't it? The only document uh, me- ever created on a, a piece of cloth i think that somebody tore off yeah. their body <laughs> their coat that they literally right. just tore off their body and wrote it on that's right yep and yep. yeah that was verse verse 12 and it came to pass that he rent his coat and he took a piece thereof and wrote upon it in memory of our god our religion and freedom and our peace our wives and our children and he fastened it upon the end of a pole yeah it's exactly what joe read to us in the very beginning Yep. I thought it I thought at the end it said um Eddie Bauer. But that, that might have been the tag. <laughs> it was it was the tag on the outfit on that he coat. had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Do we have a title of Liberty today? Or do we have more than one? It's a good question. So uh, do you think do you think now this is obviously and uh, we're we're all American and stuff like that. Do you think the the U.S. flag holds some sort of similitude to the title of liberty? I do. You grow up saying the Pledge of Allegiance when you're a kid. It's a symbol. Yeah, I absolutely do. Yes, I think. Yeah, I think the 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 flag of the United States is 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 a a, a type of title of liberty. Mm-hmm. Because it really, there's a lot of symbolism there. There's a lot of people who, many, many people fought and lost everything they had, including their lives, mm-hmm. for the things that, that he was talking about here, for, for our sure. God, our freedom, our wives, our children. Mm-hmm. I think the covenants that we make are titles of liberty as well. Oh, that's good, uh-huh. yeah. Um for sure. And, and you know, the, just talking about the flag, you, you brought up the Pledge of Allegiance, Joe. Mm-hmm. There's probably a reason why they decided that, that we, they don't want our school children reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, you know. Because if you think about the words of the Pledge of Allegiance, right, you can't, it's harder to tell everybody that we live in a democracy if you're reciting mm-hmm. the Pledge of Allegiance that says, and right. to the republic for which it for which stands. It stands. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, one the flag nation stands for the republic. Exactly, one nation under what? God. Really? Under God. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, everything that, and, and I'm not saying it's a perfect pledge, but what a what a pledge, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that's pretty darn good. And yeah, that's the easiest thing to do if, if you want to get a people that for to forget what it took to work to be where we're at now and like kenny said what what everybody went through so that we could have this nation what they gave up what they sacrificed yeah let's just not do the pledge of allegiance anymore and then we're just going to tell them oh no you live in a democracy no we don't don't believe the foundation yeah we, we don't believe no no this has nothing to do with god i mean you know just like satan one one little thing at a time let me let me read you this uh, as another another um, 
candidate for a title of liberty of our day. This is, I believe, from President Oak's recent talk, uh, the plan and the proclamation. There may be more to the title than that. But anyway, here's the quote. Forty years ago, President Ezra Taft Benson taught that every generation has its tests and its chance to stand and prove itself. I believe our attitude toward and use of the family proclamation is one of those tests for this generation. I pray for all Latter-day Saints to stand firm in that test. Mm. Mm. I, I really think that's one of, we, we see, we see in these chapters, one of the biggest risks. That was one of the things I was going to talk about a little bit later on, but it, it's really, we don't have to go through all those verses in, in chapter 51, but it can be summarized as saying that even though they had their walled cities, even though the, the Nephites gathered together, many of these places were still overtaken by the Lamanites. And, and in part was because they were divided. Mm -hmm. And if there is something that is dividing us, I would say if, if you cannot get behind the family proclamation, that's something in our day that is dividing people. Um, and I don't, I, it's, it's, I guess I, could, I can't say that I don't understand, um, but I just, I can't get, I can't get behind the other side of that. I think the family proclamation, is, I, I have a testimony of the family proclamation. I will say that. And I, I definitely stand behind that. And if you're struggling with that, I, I say you, you got to search, your, search yourself out. And, and try to figure figure it out. Figure out what's going on. Are you are you are you getting bad information? Are you in some sort of an echo chamber where, where things are reinforcing your preconceived ideas? Are are you buying into some of this victim victim mentality? Are you buying into some of this jealousy? Are you oppression and all these other things? Are are you somehow off track? Because if the prophet is saying this is um this is scripture. This is our heavenly father's plan. And you're going, mm, I just think they're wrong a little bit on some of this. I think that's a red, I think that's a wake up call. Yeah. I think you got to do some humble searching on that. And, and I think that, you, that with that, you'll receive a uh, confirmation and an answer and strength and a testimony and greater peace and love in your home. Um, ultimately happiness from backing that title of liberty. Amen. Good. Well said, Joe. Thank you. It's kind of like um, the Ronald Reagan quote, you know, this famous quote that said, if we forget that we are one nation under God, then we'll be a nation mm. gone under. Mm -hmm. And so when we remove things like the pledge of allegiance to the flag, you know, we're little by little, we're removing that remembrance from our children, generation by generation. And so all this knowledge that we had at first of the sacrifices that were made and what this country stood for when it was founded kind of just gets forgotten. It's, it's something that within just a few generations, people don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I had one more, I did have one more quote I wanted to share. That's actually kind of going back to when we were talking about the people that were the- I have the one dissenters. more thing to wrap it up to whenever you're done with yours. Okay, the dissenters that Amalekai was, was, was kind of drumming up. Um, Elder Neil A. Maxwell said, quote, there are dissenters who leave the church either formally or informally, but who cannot leave it alone. Usually mm -hmm. anxious to please worldly galleries, they are critical or at least condescending toward the brethren. Right. They not only seek to steady the ark, but also on occasion to give it a hard shove. <laughs> Often having been taught the same true doctrines as the faithful, they have nevertheless moved in the direction of dissent. They have minds hardened by pride. Mm. I love me some Neil A. Maxwell quotes. Oh, yeah. Here's a statement um, I think that applies this. Whenever you're talking about a title of liberty, whenever you're talking about covenants, um, you're talking about these things, I think it ultimately um, boils down to commitment. Um, and I think I see this when uh, Captain Moroni, Moroni rips his Eddie Bauer coat and writes this on it. Um, it's a, it's a rally cry basically, right. To, to say, this is worth fighting for. This is worth risking your life for mm -hmm. because it is bigger mm -hmm. than our petty, our petty differences. It is bigger than this life. 
Um, mm. And so there was this statement I'd come across years ago, and I'll, I'll read it to you now, and then I'll tell you of where it came from. <clears throat> it reads, uh, this is the Fellowship of the Unashamed. I don't know if you've heard it before. Mm, not sure. I am part of the Fellowship of the Unashamed. The die has been cast. I have stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is secure. I am finished and done with low living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, chintzy giving, and dwarfed goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I now live by presence, lean by faith, love by patience, lift by prayer, and labor by power. My pace is set, my gait is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions few, my guide reliable, my mission clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until heaven returns, give until I drop, preach until all know, and work until he comes. And when he comes to get his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. My colors will be clear. The author of this work was a Rwandan man in 1980 who was forced by his tribe to either renounce Christ or face certain death. He refused to renounce Christ and was killed on the spot. The mm. night before, he had written The Fellowship of the Unashamed, which was found in his room. Bob Moorhead had written this in his book, Words Aptly Spoken, in 1995. Wow. Wow. Now, whenever I think of the title of liberty and committing yourself to something bigger, bigger than your petty differences, bitter, bigger than this, bigger than your life, bigger than this life, I think of these gospel principles and our Savior and being able to throw yourself wholeheartedly into his work. Absolutely, Amen. man. Amen. That's that. I think that's a good, a good note to end on right there. Keep on striving, awesome. right? That's right. Till next time, y'all keep on striving. On the side. Come on. I was an ugly <laughs> baby, though. Did I ever tell you how ugly I was as a baby? No, it was so was ugly, you? the doctor looked at you and slapped your mama. That's true. That, that happened. I, you know, when my granddad was born, they passed out cigars. And when my dad was born, they passed out cigarettes. But when I was born, they just passed out. <laughs> I was so ugly as a baby, my mom breastfed me through a straw. I mean, that's how ugly I was. Oh, that's God. pretty ugly. Wow. When I played in the sandbox, cats tried to bury me. That's, that's pretty ugly. <laughs> and smelly. Yeah.